Hey, what's up, everyone? You are listening to the J, and you are listening to episode 172. It is Monday, June 5th. I'm your host, Kennedy, and we also got a lot of cool stuff planned for this episode. Let's say Fast and the Furious 3. Yes, this past Sunday, our J Press team, consisting of Garland, Ray, and Karen, the three had a chance to go to Universal and check out the Fast and the Furious 3 press junket, and also check out the red carpet. So you get to listen to the roundtable interview with director Justin Lin, and also some interviews with some of the celebs coming from the red carpet. So it's all good. We got a lot of cool stuff planned for this episode of The J. Hey, baby. Do you like dancing all night? That was Nicole Chirino with Now You're Free. Before that was the Taiwanese band Lady from Mars with Love Strength. Before that was Conte Nalang from the Filipino band Pedicab. And kicking off the J444 was... V-O-X with Dancing All the Night. We'll be back with more of the J after these messages. Hi, it's the Cine Gang. A Filipino-American podcast. We discuss Filipino-American life from Virginia Beach, Virginia. So check us out at cine-gang.com. We talk about anything and everything from our unique Pinoy perspective. We offer a Filipino word of the day. We offer examples of Pinoy power. We talk about poetry, food, or whatever comes to mind. So visit us at cine-gang.com and join us, The The Cine Gang. Gang. What is the Orange Lounge Radio To Go Edition? It's all the news that video gamers really want to know about. Yeah, it's all about the news about games that don't suck. Well, what's a podcast? It's a recorded show that you can subscribe to, so you always get the news first. And you don't have to have an iPod to listen to it either. Winamp, Windows Media Player, it's all good. I'm Rob Roberts, and every week on the Orange Lounge Radio To Go Edition, I'll bring you news about what's going on in the gaming world. From next generation gaming to current classics you know and love, we'll give you the news and talk about the effects the news can have on the scene. I'm Jamie Summers, and every week on Orange Lounge, I'll be here to give you my honest input on the news. When gaming lawsuits are the issue or a new law is on the table that could affect the gaming world, we'll be here to help you understand how the result could affect you. Also, tune in for my advice column every week. Because gamers, if you stay indoors and play video games all day long, you'll never be able to go out and get laid. I'm Loki, and every week on Orange Launch Radio to Go, I'll keep you posted on the latest in gaming gear, from hacks to mods to cracks to emulation. We'll be here to give you an uncensored view of what people on the internet are up to. And tune in to find out what geeks of the world install Linux on next. Join us at www.orangeloungeradio.com for all the information you need to subscribe to our show. Click on the link that says Orange Lounge Radio to go on the left side of the page for all the info you need. And send us an email if you have any comments or suggestions to go at orangeloungeradio.com. Back to JN Radio with your host, Kennedy. It's a beautiful wave. Hey everyone, welcome back to the J. And what you're about to listen to next is a roundtable that was held at Universal Studios this past Sunday, where we had several of our JN press team, Garland, Ray, and Karen, uh, who covered the event. And in this roundtable that you're about to listen to, uh, it's uh, the first round of the media roundtable where uh, you will hear uh, several people from different parts of the media, and uh, including Garland of the J, uh, interviewing the director, Justin Lin. Now, some of you are wondering, who is Justin Lin? Well, if some of you may have remembered him uh, from his uh, film. The film was titled Better Luck Tomorrow. And it was a Asian-American film that, you know, was real well received uh, from Roger Ebert and several other critics and it definitely uh, led him to really cool opportunities such as directing The Fast and the Furious 3. So here's the roundtable. Press interview with Justin Lin. So you, you did the racing thing yourself? I did a little bit. It was fun. Just for research, right? Yeah, it's, it's the uh, perk of a uh, studio movie. Yeah. <laughs> this wasn't the, the, the film you we would think you would uh, make just uh, afterwards. Yeah, too. Yeah. <laughs> so, so how did it uh, came along? Um, well, for me, it was you know after doing like an independent film, I had other films that I really wanted to make. Mm-hmm. And the thing that I learned was, you know, I had to find the right people in the right situation. You know, and it's always much tougher to to go and make you know independent film to get the right pieces together. You know, and 
at the same time, opportunities kind of opened up. You could just meet for studio, you know, projects, and uh, I felt like, you know, I wanted to learn about what that process is like. And, and in a way, it's kind of intertwined with in the overall picture, you know. And I, I, I didn't go chase this movie. You know, the studio came to me, so that was the difference. And I, I really did like the people involved, and I, I always loved westerns. Pulpy Westerns, yeah. you know, and I thought this could be that kind of global postmodern Western, yeah. that fun yeah. popcorn movie, you know. Also, and, also we did the action and, uh, and the cars. Yeah, that's also something that, you know, I I always love the chases and stuff, and I, I love, you know, it's hot today, but I, I, I love summer movies, you know, <laughs> and, and it's, it's always, ever since I was a kid, um, so I thought it'd be a fun little ride, and it has been, you know, it's been, I signed on a year ago, pretty much today, you know, and here we are, we're done, so I have to go to Tokyo and hang out there. And um, how hard is it doing a movie that it's, it, it's a franchise, so uh, do you have any rules that you couldn't, you couldn't bend, and uh, how hard is it to make it uh, interesting the third time around? Well, this time around, this is kind of a unique situation, because, yeah. you know, a lot of times, when you watch sequels, it's just kind of like rehashing, like revisiting yeah. old friends, and then they take the structure. But this one was totally different. Um, I know that the studio, before I came on, they tried doing it like that, bringing the characters back, but then they were trying to incorporate the idea of drifting into it, and it never felt organic, you know? So, for me, it was a great situation, because it, I got to do whatever, you know, I wanted. There was no real boundaries, except to have cars and hot chicks. Which is not bad, right? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, what was the number one question? Did you take your car when you were And another question is, what did you want to do? Did I choose a car when I was a teenager? Yeah, when you were a teen. You know, like oh, teenager. when I was a teenager? Yeah. Um, I didn't have that money for cars or anything. I was, uh, I'm not really into cars, but what was great, kind of, uh, with these, with when you do movies, is you get to kind of immerse yourself. And I got to really get into the world, you know, be a fly on the wall. And I, I've learned to really appreciate kind of the art and the craft of, of, you know, the car culture. You know, and that's one of the things that I wanted to really make sure was, you know, I, I grew up and I loved basketball. I played basketball all the time, and I hate it when I watch movies where. Tell when the actors weren't didn't know how to play or they didn't really respect the sport, you know. So I, 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 even though I'm not, I wasn't, I'm not really into the car culture. I wanted to make sure I respect the culture. So, you know, I had, I, I, I had Toshi, Ayama, and Keiji, the, um, the real drifting, come on, and it was not easy. It's not like, hey, come on and be a part of the movie. I wanted them to be hard on me and be, you know, because to me this is a movie and this is a great experience. To them, it's a career, you know. So I wanted to make sure I respect them. And your opinion really matters a lot. So. Piggy on that, Justin. Um, one of the criticisms for the first two films is that, uh, in spite of them being box office successes, they weren't very realistic for the folks that are actually in the scene. How important was it um, uh, to come clean on that for this this film? I think it's very important. You know, I think that that's the that's the main thing. If you're gonna make a movie like this, you know, you gotta at least respect the people who are gonna go and hopefully enjoy and watch these movies. Um, and at the same time, I do feel like we're at an age right now where a lot of times this, you know, CG and technology is so, it, it, it's, it's growing so fast that some people have been taking for granted, you know? And when I, I don't know, for me personally, when I watch like good car chase movies and stuff like that, I always end up going back to Bullet, you know, hey, and the old, the older movies because they didn't have the effects. You know, they kind of had to get whatever they get. And, there was a rawness, there was like a, a real sense of danger that the car could flip at any point. And that's something I wanted to bring to this franchise. And uh, that, that was definitely um, a very um, priority, a very high priority. So, so how heavily did you have to, 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 re, to rely on CG? And uh, when, when you got to the point that 
you, you knew that it wasn't possible to do that stunt without being too dangerous for the driver. Or for well, that was the thing. If it was too, if it was impossible, then I, I wouldn't do it. You know, and that was, you know, Terry Leonard and Reese and the stunt team and everything. I, I wanted to make sure. Sure, there, there's sometimes unique effects, but the idea is to aesthetically or, or, or stylistically try to construct it so that it's not there to show off. Like, hey, the camera can go underneath the car and through the window. You know, because to me, subconsciously, you just know that, oh, that they're on the green screen or something. And so I, I wanted to make sure that all the stunts that were, were pulled in this movie it, it was real. And, you know, an example was there's, um, there's like the, uh, the these garages, they have those lamps that go up, the circular ramps. And I remember I asked Toshi, I said, uh, is it possible for you to drift up? It would be really cool if you drift up. And he's like, Technically, it's possible. And, uh, oh, okay, well, that's cool. That's uh, if that's good enough. You know, I don't want to crash ten cars. Let's maybe build a railing or something. Um, and then Reese came up and said, "I can do it." And I said, oh, "I know you can do it, but you know, I don't want to wreck too many cars doing this." He's like, I, I can do it. Just give me a shot. And I said, "Okay, you get one shot." And he, he just ripped it right up. You know, and I, I couldn't believe it. The clearance was maybe about six inches to a foot on each side. It was pretty unbelievable. Um, but once that happened, I was like, wow. And then it up everyone's game, and it became a lot of fun. The camera guys were like, whoa. You know, so the precision that they brought to the project allowed everybody else to up their games and just start having fun. The, the idea of drifting is, is a real uh, step forward in terms of, uh, well, street racing. That's what we're uh, talking about. Uh, do you think that is going to, to get, uh, like, uh, something that people want to wanna be trying? Uh,
not cheap either. <laughs> and and for me, it didn't really hit me until we were, you know, we were going on to do some uh, green screen stuff, and I wanted this one angle. And I told the crew, I said, I, I need the angle of the camera right here, and they're like, Oh, no problem. And I remember I had to go to the restroom. And I walked outside, and I just see them like, oh, they're just cutting the car in half. The '67 Mustang. I'm like, Oh, they're definitely here. <laughs> In terms of street racing, what, what do you think that draws uh, kids to uh, uh, try and, and mimic what, what they see in, in maybe the screen and, and, and all that culture that has been around? Also in, in Portugal we have had a lot of crashes and accidents and uh, basically what do you think people uh, absorb? self-expression, you know, it's an expression of oneself. It's, drifting is not even about winning, it's, it's about style. And who you are kind of, in a way, extends yourself all the way to how you drift. You know, and there's no real right way or wrong way of doing something. Um, so that's kind of the unique, that's something that's very different from like a straight out quarter mile race. And even, you know, the way they, especially in Tokyo, when you look at the cars, it's weird, you know. It's like it's. It, I love. I loved it when I was there. It was just a bunch of, you know. It, it. It was. It was a society where everybody kind of respects each other, but at the same time, like, there's some like. There's like a layer of. I don't know what it is. Maybe repression that comes out in these like real like strong expressions and these cars. Some of them. I look at it. I'm like, well, I. I this is way too much even for you know for a movie. This would be. If I, I put this into the movie, people would say, oh man, you're trying too hard. You know, and it was, it was very interesting, and that, that gave me the idea of how, like, you know, when we were designing these cars, really come from the character, really kind of talk about the character, and everything that the car, the kits, the way it looks, the tires, and the rims, everything, we, we made sure that it was, it was coming from, internally from the individual. Like the digital stating of the uh, race, isn't it? You know? Very much so. I'm sure you'll see later today. Yeah. Uh, what, what is the personality of a, of a drifter race? Um, what does it take? It's 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 very interesting, you know, and it's it's I, uh, the, the, everyone that I've met, they're, they're very they're very laid back, I think, because it, you kind of have to have this kind of tenacity of like I'm gonna go for it and have the guts and the balls to do it, but at the same time, you know, it's not about if you go if that's the way you're gonna spin out every time, so it's about kind of relaxing at the same time. So actually, I I, I had a great time with. All the drivers, even when I was doing the research, I just hang out with these guys, and you know, all they wanted was to get another set of tires so they can go and drift. And I love that. It was kind of like it reminds me of surfers growing up. You know, they're just kind of like there, hanging out all day, waiting for the right wave. You know, and it, was, it, was, it was very similar. In terms of scale, profile, and budget, this is this film is a big departure from your previous three films. Uh, what's been the biggest difference this uh, this experience for you? Um, well, it's a huge corporation I'm dealing with, and um, it, it, making a studio movie, it is very, it's, it's a whole different process than doing a definitive film, you know. At the same The idea of uh, drifting, the, the concept that uh, originated in uh, Japan, I think. Yeah, it originated in, in, in backwards. And it, it was very fascinating when I talked to people. It was just a bunch of kind of these working class kids, and they had really nothing to do, but they saw all these winding roads, and they, were just, they loved cars. And so they found that you could take a rear, rear wheel drive and just pull the e brake and something, and it spins the back, and it became this car, and they just, they just kind of go down and, and they race down. and the best way is just to kind of almost slow them uh, down and the more they did it the more they realized wow it's not even the race itself it's just kind of like how how they're able to kind of control and let the car go and glide and that's how people that's what people enjoy and that became kind of the art and that's how it started 
they also have the, the, the pink slip uh, thing uh, and, and not really when I, I know sometimes you know when I talk to them they're they didn't really do too much of uh, you know, my car versus your car. Much, you know, it's more just, it's just, it really, it, again, it kind of more like surfers. Wow. You know, this person had a personality attitude, and that became, that, that, that's what I was about. So, so for a kid that wants to get in, into this uh, drifting, how much do you think it you, you will have to, to put together to get a, a nice car? <laughs> like this? Um, it depends. You could get like a, 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 a an older car with a rear wheel, and you can play. but it's not. I don't think it's cheap. You know, you can, I mean, I went on these things, and it's like you, you go around seven times, and the tires are done. You know, but you, you set a tire. You know. So, how, how much do you think are we talking about? I, I don't know the specifics, but I remember asking the kids in Tokyo, I said, "How do you do it?" You know, and they said, "All they do is they work, just get enough money to buy the tires and stuff." And so it was like it, it literally was their livelihood. I, I don't, I, I don't know the exact. Uh, are you doing the the old boy remake after this? Uh, I'm working on it. Uh, I'm about, uh, is it hard to translate something from that? Something from that? Alright. Is it hard to translate something that hard for for uh, American audiences? Um, well, I, I, I love the theme and I love kind of the art, so it, it really is just, it comes from the character, you know, and, and I have some ideas for it, and it's, it's definitely not an easy task, you know, but I love what the theme of it and, and what it's trying to explore, so I'm still very early on right now, and uh, it's, it's one of those journeys that I, I want to jump on and take and see what happens, hopefully we get to make it, you know, but um, I, 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 we're not making it tomorrow, we're not making it next year, I, I don't know, you know, so hopefully something will come of it, but I really do love it. I'd imagine that the first thing you could see in this movie would be a, a quote saying, like, uh, don't try this uh, <laughs> anymore, or with your uh, father's car. Yeah, it, it, uh, it actually, the, the title actually drifts in, mm -hmm. you know, do that. And what about you in terms of contract time? Have you signed already for the fourth one? Uh, there's been, it's been a good couple of weeks, uh, of kind of thought it would be really great projects for me. This could be a lot of work, but I've already got to be quite a minute right now. I'm shooting in six weeks, so I'm probably going to go back and make it a no-budget movie, so. been catching on in the United States is through the Japanese animation Initial D. Has that influenced your filmmaking for this film at all? Um, Initial D was fun and I think, you know, Keiji was a big part of creating that, you know. Um, but I, you know, the the cartoon and the, and the anime, it was, it, was, it was a lot of fun, you know. Um, it was very kind of, in a way, they, they, were, they were able to be instructional stuff. But I don't, I don't think it was, you know, for me it was, it was, it was great because as a filmmaker to go in and, and to see when you start seeing car drift, you know, I, I realized there are a lot of um, things visually that hasn't been explored, that hasn't been shot. So it was, it was great to kind of go in there 
Um, but seeing the cartoon, I mean, obviously they had limitations in how they had to do it, but it was it was definitely fun. And I talked to Keiji, and I think he kind of, uh, I think they made a feature of it, and um, he, he wasn't a part of that. And But yeah, they, it was kind of fun watching the, the cartoon and stuff. Um, but I know that's, for a lot of people, that's kind of the, the Bible of, of drifting, you know. But I, I had fun watching the, the anime or whatever. But Are you a fan of drifting now? Um, I like watching it from afar. <laughs> I don't like to be. Uh, I don't. I don't like to. I don't have to like the rubber hitting my face. <laughs> no, it's fine. You guys should maybe yeah, play maybe play in, in the video games. Uh, no, I like. I'd rather be in a in a real in the car. car. To be honest. Well, thank you guys. Okay. Thank Thanks. you very much. Yeah. And that was the press roundtable interview with director Justin Lin. Really cool roundtable. Uh, really cool questions asked. And uh, right after right after the uh, roundtable, the uh, press. Well, one member of the press was uh, uh, was able to have the opportunity to ride a drift car for about 20 seconds with a professional uh, drifter. Uh, Garland of the J was able to. Uh, well, actually, both Garland and Ray uh, had opportunities to to ride a drift car. And uh, here's Garland's experience. This is Garland with J N uh, in a drift car right now, and we're about to. Uh we're about to uh, head around the track, and I uh, will be leaving this recorder on during the duration, which hopefully isn't going to be long. Signing out. And look at that. He was calm as usual. <laughs> anyway, we'll be back with more of the Fast and the Furious 3 coverage in Los Angeles at Universal Studios. So don't touch that dial. We'll be back after these messages. Come and meet the voices behind your favorite anime characters at Anime Next. The next evolution of anime conventions. See the latest anime videos. Hear news about your favorite titles. And play your favorite games. All at Anime Next in Seacaucus, New Jersey. Just minutes from New York City. Check us out on the web at www.animenext.org. Anime Next. The next evolution of anime conventions. Anime Next. Hajimemashite. This is Josh from the Josh in Japan podcast. I'm coming to you partially live to tell you about my show, the Josh in Japan podcast. Each week I introduce a new topic dealing with what life is like here in Japan. I also take many questions from my audience. Want to know what to eat? Want to know where to sleep? Want to know where to, to, to do your business? Just ask and I'll be sure to help you along the way. And don't be frightened by those other podcasters that just go on and on about their boring daily routines. That's not me. I'm all about answering the tough questions. Seriously, try me. Joshinjapan.com For the typical gaijin who just wants to survive. There was a Filipino guy. The Filipino guy gets stopped by immigration at the airport. So the immigration tells him, Use the words chicken, nut, and bread in a sentence. So the Filipino looks around. It's like panicking. Oh, but then he puts a bag over a woman's head and yells, 
Chicken at bread! Chicken at bread! <laughs> For more corny jokes and Pinoy life stories from three Filipino sisters, check out the Tarlets podcasting at tarlets.net. Hello, JN fans. This is Kumiko Kato. Please check out my website at www.kumikokato.com. And now back to JN Radio. And that guy was awesome. So that was our YouTube minute. And now we return back to our Fast and the Furious 3 coverage in Los Angeles at Universal Studios with Garland, Ray, and Karen. This is a giant podcast uh, broadcasting live from the Universal Studios backlot. From the Universal Studios backlot. Uh, we're here for the Fast and the Furious Tokyo Drift uh, press junket. Uh, I'm Garland G. I'm here with Karen No. Ray Warner. And we're just going to uh, talk about what's been going on today. Uh, earlier today, we showed up in the morning. Uh, they fed us breakfast, and uh, I got to have a roundtable interview with Justin Lin, which was okay, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> roundtable interviews always have a, a problem where uh, you have like 10 different reporters asking different questions, and th there's no real actual <laughs> flow to any of the questions. So... Uh, after that, we uh, we got to experience some drifting out in this back lot, and um, let's see what, uh, what 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 have we experienced today? Uh, from what I've overheard from the other press people around here, they don't seem to know what drifting is, and it's a sad story. Some guys like, oh yes, there are these race cars. No, dude, they're not race cars. They're just regular standard cars that we get modified. They're not F-150 cars. <laughs> There's some sort of strange procession that these are special cars and they're made only differently somewhere <laughs> else off the country. Uh, no, not at all. It's just new engines, body kits, the specs and modifications done by your specially trained mechanic. And special tires. You gotta have the special tires. Oh yeah. <laughs> There's so much tires burning around here. Uh, Ray and I actually got to experience uh, being in one of the drift cars and uh, Ray, what was your experience with that? Well, after watching all of the cars prep and practice, I noticed a couple of them were having pretty crappy drivers who would actually hit the brakes too hard and stop their cars, but I was fortunate enough to be able to ride the reddish color Viper and we'll research who the driver is later. But he told me that he had been driving for a number of years now, maybe about three or four professionally and had actually driven the Evo as well as a couple others for the movie. But the uh, reason why I specifically hunted down to find this one was on his first, one of his initial runs, he tore out and blew off the hood of his car as well. And so I decided this has got to be the guy I'm going to ride with. So the experience itself was pretty exhilarating as we got in and had to wear a, unfortunately, really bulky helmet, which was for our protection. But going through, asking a couple questions in actual drift, it's amazing to see that at whatever speeds we were going at, which were significantly fast, drifting and seeing the back tires and then the front tires of the, the tandem car that was riding with us. So definitely worthwhile. I'm not sure how much of a hype I had going into it, but for the most part, an enjoyable experience. Yeah, I got to uh, ride in uh, the Sylvia with uh, Dai. He's one of the... Uh, the drifters from Japan, and he's he's really good. I expected to uh, go into this thing uh, and then just be bounced around the interior of the car and come out nauseous, but uh, the driver was really good. It was yeah, the right. ride was really smooth, and uh, it, it it was a good experience. Um, I, smoothness just overwhelmed me, but uh, I really don't show my emotions much, so no one knows anything about that. Aww. But, <laughs> but uh. So Ray and I got to uh, ride in a drift car, and uh, and uh, we're sitting down at lunch now, just uh, taking in the atmosphere. Um, there's a lot of burnt rubber in the air, and it's getting on everything. And uh, bad second hand. <laughs> so later on today, we'll be uh, at the red carpet for the uh, sneak preview for celebrities, and and we'll be getting a. Uh, 
more uh, interviews and sound clips for you there. So, uh, podcast out. And then around 3 o'clock, it was time for the red carpet uh, press event where uh, a lot of press get together and take their photos and interview the celebs walking through the red carpet as they go in to see uh, the film, Fast and the Furious 3. So here are a few, a few of the interviews on the red carpet with a few celebs before they went in to watch the film, Fast and the Furious 3. Uh, this is Jay Ant with uh, Perry Shen. <laughs> yeah, we have a long history. <laughs> yeah. um, what brings you out to the carpet today? Uh, this is like a movie being shown and they're giving away free food. Really? Free yeah. food? <laughs> no, it's uh, the whole cast from, um, we work with uh, Justin Lin from Better Like Tomorrow and I was one of the, uh, the actors there and uh, it's, the movie came out like literally I think three years ago to the day, you know, April 11th, 2003 and now we're, we're in June and uh, it's it's really cool, it's like a graduation for him, you know, being to, to, to debut in like full-blown uh, mainstream picture and, and red carpet is so long I can't even see the end of it. I mean our red carpet was literally from like like here and three steps to the left, you know, and, and uh, it's just, uh, it's, it's really cool to, to see and we're so, so proud of it. Um, this next question, someone's probably, they probably haven't asked you this, but uh, All right. I've read your blog. Uh-huh. How is the box going, the cardboard box? The cardboard box that I made for my 14 uh, month year old daughter. Uh, it's it's really tricked out. You would like hanging out in it. It's got a sunroof and there's like a little rope that you pull and it just pops open and it's got a little drawbridge and so basically it's everything I wanted. <laughs> so my daughter gets the best. Um, you mentioned in your blog that you have some downtime now. What are you doing with your downtime? Uh, pretty much uh, just sort of a promoting project that came out last year. Like I did this movie called Hatchet that sort of uh, went to Tribeca this year and uh, did a lot of uh, great buzz and a lot of studios are interested. And then a movie that I did for with Bai Ling and Faye Dunway called The Gene Generation that, uh, that will be a start of the promoting scene too. So it's mostly project promotion so let you know this next year I'll do a project and then next year I'll do a promotion for that so I guess that's the way things were. All right. Sounds great. Thank you so much for talking with Thank us. You, very much. you can learn more about Perry Shen at uh, www.perryshen.com or you can check out his blog at www.sanga.com slash Perry Shen. Uh, this is Jay Ann speaking with Roger Fan. Um, we spoke with Perry Shen earlier today and he said this is like a, a Better Luck Tomorrow reunion. Uh, how would you characterize this? Uh, oh, you know, it's just good. I mean, you know, it's been five years ago since Better Luck Tomorrow and it's good to see someone like Justin who succeeded at the level that he has to become a huge director in Hollywood and to bring as many people from Better Luck Tomorrow on his journey. So, I mean, all the actors, producers, writers, directors, everyone's a part and that's a rare quality in Hollywood. So. Okay. What, what kind of uh, projects are you working on currently? I'm doing a movie in about five days with the uh, producer of Brick, Mark Mathis. It's a good friend of mine, Gene Rees, directing a movie called The Trouble with Romance. And then I'm going to do the follow-up of Better Luck Tomorrow in about a month called uh, Finishing the Game with Justin. So. Oh, uh, that sounds great. Uh, thank you for taking the time out to talk with us. Oh, cool. thanks, man. Thank you. Take care. Hi, this is Jay Ant speaking with Kyla Yu. Um, you have a part in this movie. You act, you sing, you model, what can't you do? <laughs> um, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not very good at cooking, but I'm trying to learn. <laughs> uh, we heard recently you had a uh, gig on Memorial Day up in NorCal. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's opening for um, Christina Miliana Avery. That was a really good show. That's good to hear. Um, what projects do you have in the works now? Uh, right now I'm working on my album, so it should be coming out summertime. Yeah. Thank you for taking time to talk with us. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Uh, this is Jay Ant speaking with John Cho. Uh, what, what brings you out to the carpet today? Uh, I, 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 I was going to go, go uh, to Rubio's and uh, I saw the commotion and decided to see what was going on. Okay. Uh, Perry Shan earlier uh, characterized this as kind of like a better luck tomorrow reunion. Uh, how do you feel about all this? How do I feel about the reunion? Yeah. That's great. He's a good fellas and I'm happy to see him, especially in a high high intensity atmosphere like this. What projects do you have in the works right now? Uh, well, I, I got a show on uh, NBC this fall called The Single Stable and um, we're trying to make Harold and Kumar for part two and um, that's going to be happening and uh, 
But I don't know, I made a Greg Rocky movie called Smiley Face coming out with Anna Ferris. And, uh, oh, it. that sounds great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much for talking with us. Oh, not at all. This is Garland G with the uh, last podcast of the day for the Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift uh, premiere. And uh, I just got to say today was really hot. Uh, what about you, Ray? Uh, I'd have to agree. It was really, really hot. <laughs> Karen? Caliente. Yeah. Today was really hot. We spent most of it outdoors, but... Uh, Luckily, <laughs> where there's sunblock. Luckily, uh, they gave us uh, passes to the park, to Universal Studios. So during our downtime, we got to ride the tram, and and after the whole the Fast and the Furious exhibit as part of the tram ride. Yeah, like video tours, baby, video tours. Yeah, on the tram ride, they they uh, unveiled a new Fast and the Furious exhibit, exhibit, and. Uh, Let's see, what else did we do today? Huh, on the red carpet, we met a lot of celebrities. And uh, let's see, uh, I, don't, I don't have a favorite interview. Oh, my favorite interview was uh, Perry Shen, because he remembered Jayant, and, and that that's very close to my heart. And I, I, I it's very heartfelt. I love that. Ray, <laughs> favorite interview. Go. Uh, I'd have to say, me finally telling Aiko Tanaka to approve me for MySpace. <laughs> so, Aiko and Kyla were cool. I didn't really ask anybody else any questions. Recognizing MC Hammer, Ooh. telling him that Hammer don't hurt us. <laughs> <laughs> what's your carry? Um, 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 well, what's your favorite moment of the day? Oh, oh moment? Well, I think it's really interesting that John Cho likes, uh, what's that place? Rubio? Tacos Rubio. Rubio's. Apparently he likes their fish tacos too. Yes. Uh, fish tacos are good. Favorite event on the red carpet? Maybe it was when Bow Wow just all of a sudden ran up and he was being all manic about it because he just wouldn't stand still for one photo for everybody. Oh, here you go, Dennis. Favorite event on the red carpet was sitting next to Brazil and France and having them ask people how cars are extensions of their male genitalia or. <laughs> What's the most fast or furious thing they've ever done? It was a big step up because they were going to ask, oh yes, what gets you really wet in the car? <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, Brazilian and, and French press are uh, kind of out there. So that pretty much wraps up our day for the Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift premiere. This is Garland signing off for Jayant. Everybody loves happy endings. And that was awesome coverage from Garland, Ray, and Karen. Thank you guys for bearing the heat <laughs> while I stayed here in this well air conditioned room. Anyway, guys, great job. And uh, we're going to go ahead and end the episode with Sold Out with Iruka. See you next time.